episode 270 of Magic the Amateur. That's right. You're listening to a podcast so that's for people who want to get better at the game of Magic, are new to the game, returning to the game, or, you know, are just having a pretty chill time in their chill house. And I'm one of your chill hosts, Maria. I'm one of your very chill hosts, Megan. Ooh, Megan's more chill than me. Later in the show, we'll have a chill off. That's right. We'll know who is the most chill by taking our temperature and finding out which of us has to go to the emergency room with a low-grade fever. Oh, man. Did, did you know, like, actually my temperature is <laughs> tends to be slightly lower than normal? <laughs> I mean it. What? Really? Yeah. Like, what's the, what's the human average? 98.6. Yeah. My average is, like, in the high 97s. Whoa. Like, every time I go into the doctor, my temperature is, or, like, I go to donate blood. Yeah. Regularly in the high 97s. And are the doctors like, oh, you're in 97. No, they're, they're just like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Like, they're both basically just like, you don't have a fever. Have you ever felt the need to sleep on a warm rock under a heat lamp? Always. <laughs> constantly. Yeah, that is secretly my just dream, constantly. too. Just live the life of a lizard. Oh, man. I, for a long time, had um one of those, like, it, so it wasn't an electric blanket. It was like a... um. What's the thing? Like the like a fitted mattress mattress cover. pad. Yeah, it was like a heated mm-hmm. mattress pad. Mm-hmm. Oh, these boy. things are necessary if you live in a state like Minnesota. Yeah, I also grew up with one of those, and it was it's the amazing. best. Anyways, I could talk about things <laughs> related to sleeping for forever because, boy, do I like sleeping. <laughs> On I'm our next now podcast, about it too much. <laughs> sleeping. Let's go take a nap. <laughs> We'll be back in 20 minutes. When we're back, we've got there's a lot of cool stuff going on for you that doesn't involve naps. That's right. What does it involve? Well, it involves some new Dominaria cards. Oh Dominaria. my goodness. Also, we're answering Dominaria. a For the Noobs mailbag question. Dominaria. Dominaria? I like to say Dominaria because it sounds very fancy. Like, isn't that what it's called? I don't Dominaria? know because you say Dominaria. Dominaria. Or no. Dominaria. You could even say Dominaria, Dominaria. Dominaria. Ugh, I don't like those ones. It's got to be Dominaria. Dominaria. Dom- now you got me in my head about this. <laughs> Dom- Dominaria. Dominaria. I'm just going to say like, Look, Wingardium it's, Leviosa. It's A-R-I-A, not A-R-E-A. Like Dominaria. <laughs> oh, this is just a Dominaria. <laughs> hey, you guys, I'm going to go down to our <laughs> floor's Dominaria. <laughs> Just like a common area. <laughs> Great Dominaria. point. Everybody who's listening out there, please oh boy. support our effort to pronounce it Dominaria. Like the fancy magic players I that we are. I don't think that we're saying it wrong. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. I just know I've heard other people say Dominaria and Dominaria. Dominaria. <laughs> <laughs> and it messes hey with my dome. On the podcast today, it's going to be 45 minutes of us discussing how you should pronounce the name wow. Dominaria. Hard hitting episode yep we're We're here to deliver that kind of (laughs) tough magic (laughs) tough magic thought to you we're also going to talk about team modern super league uh coming up some new and improved magic modern decks oh that's right or are they not improved? well we'll find out just new modern decks yes and just playing some wackiness we're gonna play guess that card Ooh. in german guess that card guess that german card so you're going to get a nice taste of me and Megan's fluent German that we speak. Yes, very fluent German. Later in this episode. But before we do all these fun things, we have an even more funner thing to do. That's right, which is thanking you. Yay. Thank you so much to everyone that supports the podcast on Patreon. Patreon.com slash MTAcast. The place to go to toss as little as $5 a month our way. That is cents a day. You it's can like literally 15- toss it. Cents a day, you can toss it. Toss your card at the computer and it will register it'll the info. Reg- it'll know what you meant. Um, contributing to the podcast on Patreon keeps us able to do this. Without you, we could not. No. That is factually accurate. It just would not happen. If we did not have so many wonderful people helping and supporting the podcast, it would not be possible. You truly are part of the family. So please consider becoming part of the family and uh, pitching in to help keep us on the cat mouth waves. And you know what? If you didn't, if people didn't support us, you would have to listen to an hour of static every week. That's right. (laughs) It would be, you wouldn't be able to turn it on or off. It would just happen to you. 
Yes. Yes. So thank you, everybody, yeah. who decided to join. Go to patreon.com slash MTA cast mm-hmm. and become a new member. Um, we are trying to get, like stay at the threshold of 700 members or more, uh, but we keep like kind of dipping below it or whatever. So I would like to see us get to that point and like keep going upward. So help us achieve our goal. Just go there today. Yeah. It'll take you a minute. Patreon.com slash MTA cast. And you're getting all these awesome videos and stuff for us, too. That's right. Like what kinds of videos? Yeah. Like Magic 101. One, which is out every Monday. Four episodes in that uh, playlist now. Holy cow, four episodes to help you teach new people how to play Magic the Gathering. And we just did a box opening of Masters 25. That's right. Featuring some Doritos Blaze. It's a classic hot Oof. chip challenge. I ate. I'm not going to tell you how many because you're going to have to it's watch and lot. find out. Someone counted and uh, it's a lot of Dorito Blaze. I still feel awful. <laughs> Honestly, I did feel like I had like a Dorito hangover. Oh, it was so many Doritos. The and they were so spicy. So spicy. Anyway, you could witness my pain on youtube.com slash MTA cast. That's right. And a big thank you to cardkingdom.com slash MTA cast for being the sponsor of the show. You can go there and buy your singles. In fact, I just did that today. Their shipping is out of this world fast. You can ask them to include a Magic the Amateuring sticker. I'm going to tell you what Maria what? bought. <laughs> Maria bought four full art foil adorned pouncers. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> That's right. I guess why wouldn't you? The, the reason I... Okay, so I'm trying to pick a standard deck for Seattle. Spoiler alert, it might, may or may not include four foil adorned pouncers. I actually don't know yet. I'm yeah. not sure what I'm going to play. But I figured, you know what? I love this card. Having the foil promo versions, I'm not going to be too mad that I spent like 17 bucks on them. They look so cool. <laughs> I saw somebody play one against me, uh-huh. and I was like, oh, this they needs to be in really my good. life. They do look really As good. somebody who is trying to foil out a boggle stack, I'm sure you understand. <laughs> Wait, you're saying you're sure you understand because yeah. you're the person yes, foiling out I of I understand deck. my own motivations to buy these Look, adorable Maria, pouncers. As a person who has done both of these things, I'm sure you understand them by yourself. And they're so they're just so wonderful to work with. And uh, by the way, if you wanted to buy some more magic for her swag. Uh, get in. They've got their stuff restocked, so you can mm-hmm. buy that fabulous horse rainbow play mat, uh, that super cool ki- kitty cat deck box uh, that's got so laser cute. cats and all other kind of cool stuff. It goes to a great cause to stop online bullying. So yeah, cardkingdom.com slash MTA cast. For the noobs, evaluating draft cards. That's right. We got a tippity type on the tippity typer. Which is to say a message on the computer. Twitter, in fact. Yes. The tippity type of the tippity typist of the tippity typers. Yes. They asked us yes. how do you evaluate cards when you're doing a draft? Which is a great question. Great question. And I don't know if we've ever fully addressed it because we've talked about card evaluation. Yeah. Kind of, you know, more generally. Yeah. Um, but in draft, it's a whole different beast. Not it a sure whole is. different one. But you know, half a different beast. It is. <laughs> It is one half a different beast. The other half of the beast is the same beast that you know. Yes. As general card evaluation. Is this card oh, good? I was going to say, as, this... as Charles. Oh, Charles. Yeah, like this yeah, is the normal Charles beast you know, Charles. And half Hoofenstein. Yes. That's what draft evaluation is. So I thought, you know what? Let's talk about this. It's a good topic. And it, it is. It might help you level up, even if you know the basics of draft. Well, um, or you think you've got a good handle on it, it's always useful to kind of go back over and, and uh, go through how you know what you should pick when in draft. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to start things off big picture, okay? Okay. Big picture card evaluation. Yep. This is something that you use, obviously, if you're doing sealed or even if you're, you know, what the heck, building a constructed deck. you got to say to yourself, how much impact does this card have on the game? Yeah. Is this card going to be a bomb that when I play it, it's like, boom, they have to deal with it or you're going to win. That's right. Is this card a kill spell that's going to kill their best creature like a scarab god? And then you're like, now I can win. <laughs> yeah. I hate the scarab god. <laughs> is this card something that's going to swing the game back in your favor if you're losing? Um, is this gonna game card going to help you close out the game if you're winning? Et cetera, et cetera. Impact. 
Yeah. And I think you're, so you're talking, there's two different ways, I think, that people have divided up impact. Yes. Right? Um, and you touched a little bit on both of them. Uh, the first one is kind of the classic uh, bread, as bread. some people call it, which is uh, starting with B, bombs. Bombs. Uh, cards that is just like usually rares um, or sometimes really silly uncommons. Um, that if you play it and it's not dealt with, it's just going to win you the game. Right. And sometimes if you play it, even if it is dealt with, you're still going to win the game because that's how powerful that's this how card is. That's how good it is. Glorybringer, classic bomb. Oh, yeah. Um, comes in, hasty, swings for four in the air, and it kills something. That card is so good. Hazaret. Exactly. Oh, Hazaret, great Scarab card. God aforementioned. Sca Scarab God, also hard to remove. Oh, boy. Boom. Oh, as is Hazaret. Uh, so those are the kinds of ca cards that we consider bombs. And so obviously, if you open up a pack and it's your first pack and there's a bomb in your color, just take it. Great. Easy peasy. Yeah. The R. Moving on to R. Removal. Things that kill other things. Hey, removal is great. Fumigate. Um, yeah. Uh, the one that kills things. Vraska's Contempt. Vraska's Contempt. Thank you. <laughs> Ravenous Chupacabra. Yeah, that's removal and that's a, a creature. removal on a stick. Yeah. Um, Impale. Impale. Uh, these are all examples. Uh, Ixalan's Binding. Yep. Cast out. Excellent. Recent examples of removal. Um, obviously, some of it is going to be like Reaver's Ambush is removal that is honestly, I would still usually pick. If there's, if I'm opening it up a pack and I'm looking at it and there's not a bomb, um, if there's like a reaver's ambush, there's a, oh, there's a chance I might take it, even though it doesn't kill everything. Uh, it could still, it's usually going to kill something. Important moment of enough. craving. Well, yeah. Moment of craving. Great. You know? Um, so these are again, removal. removal. It's going to take care of a creature that your opponent is using to kill you. And that way you don't die. Pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. There you go. That brings us to E. Evasion. Evasion. Flying. Ooh. Unblockable. Menace. Uh, these are ways for you to push through damage, even in case of a board stall. So if, if you're imagining you've got creatures, your opponent's got creatures, and you're like, this is a nightmare. How do I attack? Well, sometimes if some person has flyers and another person does not have flyers, guess who's going to win? Flyer, flyer person. It's usually the person with flyers because they get to be on the offensive and they get to start pushing through that damage. Right. So evasion is a really important thing to pick. Uh, a. Animals. <laughs> You know, kind of. I think so, like, this, like, the A is, like, shake is, like, aggro, but they're really just talking about curve. Yes. Like, you want to take something that is going to curve well into your deck. So if you've been taking cards and you're like, oh, man, I've taken a bunch of four drops, like, I took an impale, and then I took a glory bringer. First of all, you're already winning this draft. <laughs> also, that's not a draft in which both of those cards are illegal. I don't know what kind of draft you're doing. But anyway. Chaos. Chaos draft. Um, like... Well, one, things are already going well. Yeah. Um, but say that you've got like a bunch of fours. You're going to need to start looking at, hey, I need to make sure that I have some two drops. I need to make sure that I have some three drops. Um, I don't need, I don't want everything to clog up at one spot, especially later on my, in my curve. And this is especially important in draft and kind of where we take just a, you know, a tiny bit more of a curve towards why card evaluation and draft is a little bit different than when you're building something in uh, sealed or when, you, when you're building a constructed deck is your curve considerations are even more critical in draft because it tends to be a faster format and it tends to be more of a synergistic format. Yeah. And then that brings us to D. I don't remember what it stands for. The dregs. Oh, yeah. I think it's just like everything else. Everything else. Yeah. Well, okay. D. D. Bread. So that was, yeah, that was part of what I was talking about. The other part I was touching on that you mentioned is quadrant theory. Yeah. Quadrant theory is talking about if you divide up um, the idea of a magic game <laughs> into four different sections. You can kind of You can kind of consider that there are four different states that you can be in. Sad. Happy, mad, a frad. A frad. <laughs> Sad, mad, glad, and a frad. Those are the four states of any magic game. You're going to be in one of the four of them. Wow. Uh, let's talk about glad. Glad. You're, You're ahead. winning. Exactly. Hey, things are great. You don't need to really worry about, like, basically, you need to look at a card and think, is this card going to be good? Even if I'm ahead, is it going to help me close out the game even faster so my opponent has no chance of coming back? Yep. Um, mad. mad, mad. What is the mad? What do you think mad um, is? Like a board stall? Sure, board stall is mad. Okay, board stall. 
uh, is mad. Yeah. And there's like just creatures facing each other They're off. Just staring each other down. They're just staring They're each angry. other down. This is a place where something like evasion is good. Yeah. How you, do I break this stall? You're looking at a card and saying to yourself, hey, is this card good if there's a board stall and I'm trying to push through damage? And it's like, hey, if it has unblockable or flying or menace, that's maybe something that's going to help you trample. Yeah. That's going to help you get through. Um, what oh, is a frad? What a frad? Are you um, losing? losing. You're, You're losing. losing. Yeah. Is this a card that's going to help me pull back, pull back into the game if I'm already behind? The last one is sad. It's just, in this case, you're sad because it's the beginning of the game and you're still developing your game plan. Sure. That doesn't exactly check out, but don't ask too many questions about it. Just trust us. It's when you're developing your board state. Exactly. Is this a card that if, you know, we're only in the first one to three turns of the game and, you know, we're both still, if my opponent is maybe going to play a two drop and start attacking me, or do I want to play a two drop and start attacking them? Like, what am I doing in these early turns of the game to make sure that I'm I'm not going to fall behind and set myself up for success later on. And then the other things we've talked about already was synergy and yeah. curve, um, which is also known as deck building. You know, in draft, there's obvious synergies that are happening. You can read about it on the cards. Like yeah. some will literally say in Dominaria, for example, Domino Dominaria? Dominaria. Dang it. Okay. There's Hero... <laughs> legendary matters <laughs> so uh it says literally you can't you can't cast this unless you have like a legendary creature or something and so that's a consideration to make when you're trying to build a, a synergistic deck even if it's something as uh, simple as an aggressive deck or a controlling deck what knowing in your brain what kind of deck am i trying to build will help you make better decisions as you pick your cards yeah and going back to quadrant theory because we only touch on like hey cards fall into these buckets what you're looking for is you want to make sure that you have cards that are slotting into each of those four areas and honestly like the best cards are something right that you're like this is going to be good in all of these situations you don't want an empty bucket it's going to be it's exactly like if you have no cards that fall into the bucket of these are good in the starting turns of the game you only have late game stuff your opponent might just clock you out of the game in the first couple of turns if you're not doing anything they'll run you over um if you only have cards that are good when you're winning um, which is like a lot of aggro decks for instance yeah um if they like start falling behind uh in in board states then it's like and they have nothing that's going to help them stabilize like that's bad. You always yeah. you like you want to have something that fits into each of those different buckets. And ideally, uh, the, like I said, the best cards fit into more than one bucket or all of the buckets. Every bucket ever. Exactly. And if you're asking yourself, how can one thing be in four buckets? Just think about just water. Just figure it out yourself, okay? <laughs> I'm not here to tell you about real buckets. I'm telling you about idea buckets that correspond to feeling ideas. Anyway. <laughs> The last thing just to quickly touch on is the vanilla test, which you may be f uh, familiar with. And it just basically says, how good is this creature in a vacuum? Will it be able to suck up and be discarded into my garbage can well? Or will it clog my entire vacuum? That's right. Oh. If it's out in space and not moving, <laughs> what can it do for itself? <laughs> no, in a vacuum, meaning without any other context. How good is this card? Oh. We, we use the example Grizzly Bears, which is a 2-2 two -two for two mana as a card that aces the vanilla test. It is just what it is. That's a good value for what you're getting. You're getting what you paid for with the yep. vanilla test. Four mana, five, five. Heck, oh. you're really going to town on that test. Great. It has no other text. It's just like, here I am. So our version of the vanilla test on Magic the Amateuring is the Riparian Tiger test. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which says, is this card better than a Riparian Tiger? Yeah, right. It's usually a test that we use for rares. Yeah. I'm just being like, is this Do rare I want better a Riparian Tiger more than, than a, this rare? Than a, four, a five mana 4-4 four, four that has the potential to get bigger and get trample. Yeah. Riparian Tiger, quite a card. It's just a good card. Yeah. Somebody sent us a bunch of them, by the way. Thank you. They're I'm great. looking at them right we now. We love them. They're on our wall. <laughs> They're our favorites. Riparian Tiger Test. Yes. But yeah, th those are, uh, that's some basics for you. In draft, uh, I would suggest to you watching other people draft. You can find draft videos online and kind of take tips from them as a format that's mm -hmm. new. You can watch streamers mm -hmm. like us on twitch.tv slash magic the amateuring. And you can just, just practice, man. Just yeah. practice. You'll get better. Um, the more that you do it. Dominaria preview time. That's right, everyone. 
Let's talk about some sagas because these are the cool new highlight cards from Dominaria. That is right. These look so good. Look at the art on this oh, one. History Banalia. This is beautiful. Glorious. Um, the art on it is just so cool. I love it. I love it. Um, so these sagas, again, the way they work is that they enter the battlefield. Um, and when they enter the battlefield... And after your draw step, you add a lore counter, and then whatever the number of lore counters is on it, you That's the do saga that, that happens. Thing. Exactly. So this one uh, is one, create a 2-2 two, two white knight creature token with vigilance. Two is the same thing. And then three is knights you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Cool. Very cool. And after the, the third just so good. saga, you sack it. Yeah. So you this is, this, uh, that's a mythic mm -hmm. saga. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, we've also got Fall of the Thran. So we know, we we happen to know the Thran were on Dominaria. Long, 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 long ago. time ago. Long, long time ago. Uh, five and a white. One, destroy all lands. Oh. Two okay. and three are each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. Gross. Wow. Okay. What a way to lock somebody out of the game. What a way. Well, I mean, you lost your lands. Yeah. But they also lost their lands. But they get them back. And you also get them back. Look. You get what I'm saying. You'll get you'll four back by the time this thing is done. Yes. But hopefully by then, they'll be dead. Yes. Blowing I mean, up lands. if you're blowing up lands without a plan, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, you'll uh, you'll just be ahead, and then you'll straight up lock them out. Yeah, sick. The art. Okay, so we've talked about the art on this card, yeah. not on the show, but just like between oh, the two of us, where we're so just like good. amazing. Uh, this is Danitha Capuchin Paragon. Uh, she's just got a baller hairstyle going on, and a freaking stained glass sword. And a stained glass sword. Oh, uh, it is. She's. She's totally cool, and she. I knows told it. Megan I want to cosplay as a sword. Yes, just like paint some stained glass <laughs> on a, on like yeah. a gray shirt. I'm Danitha's sword. Hello. Hi. Uh, two and a white for a two-two legendary creature, human knight. First strike, vigilance, lifelink, aura, and equipment spells ca you cast cost one less to cast. Cool. Very cool. First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink. Card's wow. just good. And by the way, the new uh, legendary border yes. on Danitha. Looks so cool. I like it. Me too. I'm down. Look, if they're if they're not going to take borders away, at least they're doing something cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, here we've got another saga. Triumph of Gerard. One in a white. Uh, one, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control with the greatest power. Uh, and that is up. one and two. Three, target creature you control with the greatest power gains flying, first strike, and lifelink until end of turn. Wow. That's pretty cool. I love it. As long as you've got a creature around, it does a job. And at the art shows, Gerard slaying some kind of serpenty beast. That's when Yogmoth was all oh, tentacly in a giant yeah, tentacle fog. Yeah, that's right. Which was a real nightmare. Good job, real. Gerard nightmare here we've got uh the new the new thing where uh wizards matter wizards matter <laughs> uh this spell costs two less to cast if you control a wizard wizards matter everybody don't let if you're a wizard don't let anyone you tell matter. you that you don't because wizards matter wizards lightning deals three damage to any target so yeah two you're to gonna red. pay three for this other if you don't have a wizard which you're like fine yeah do you know what it's an pay instant it. three damage uh, but two and a red. Wait, just a just red. Just a red. Just a red if you've got a wizard. Straight up lightning bolt. Pew! Wizard's lightning bolt. I love it. Very cool. Um, ooh, we've got counter spell if you control a wizard. Whew. Wizard's retort. One blue, blue instant. This spell costs one less to cast if you control a wizard. Counter target spell. Sick. All right, wizards. We know what you want. That's kind of cool. It super is. Have we seen this one? Yes, this Merfolk was Trickster. Merkful Trickster was previewed by a loading ready run. Oh, that's right. In Friday nights. That's right. Uh, blue, blue for a two-two flash. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. It loses all abilities until end of turn. What a trickster! My abilities. Wow. Where'd they go? Goodbye. Um, we've seen the full. We've seen the full art Lanor elves. Oh. Glorious. For there's so this is um one of the promos, the Dominaria promos. Uh is a full art Lanoir elves that's just 
beautiful. So are you going to be buying this for your elves deck? <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. And it just says add green. Add green. Very simple. Yeah. No mana pool shenanigans going on with this Llanowar elves. Tech. Add green. Yeah. Beautiful. And Llanowar elves just like hanging out in our standard format is kind of cool. Yeah. Ooh, we're going to have some... We're going to have some elves. Yeah. We're going to have some ramp. Ramp is going to happen. There's also opt. Opt is the back. Op, the art on this opt is so cool. I love this opt. It's Teferi. Yeah. And also, is he standing in front of a statue of himself? Yes. From the past. That's pretty great. I love it. Nice. Opt, which we know. And there's also a promo version of this. Oh. I wish it was all art. I alas. like this new Doomblade cast town. Ooh, <laughs> I haven't seen this. Destroy target non-legendary creature. Instant one in a black. Yeah. My oh my. Yes. Kill my things. oh my. Kill them all. Cast down. Cast down. Cast down, cast out. Um, <laughs> legendary creature Zahid, Jinn of the Lamp. That's a cool name. It really, and this art is really cool. I know we keep saying that, but look at this Dominaria's art. Dominaria's art is on point. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the cards. You may pay three and a blue and tap an untapped artifact you control rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Flying. Five, six. Wow. I'm in. Flying five, six with beautiful art and that great border. This is a scary looking gin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That card's going to do some work. Yeah. Work. <laughs> Oh my goodness. What is this? Steel Leaf Champion. What is this nonsense? It costs green, green, green for a 5-4? Can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Goo. Three mana 5-4. So this is what you're putting N in your elf B deck. D. With, this is with your Atlanta War Elves. Oh, what? I'll just tap them. Boop, boop, boop. Play yep. that stupid on thing turn, around. <laughs> on turn 2? Two? Two? Hey, I have a 5-4. Uh, War Elves. Turn 1. Atlanta War Elves. Turn 2. Steel Leaf Champion. Uh, cast down. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. <laughs> but seriously, that is a, that is a very powerful. How am right I there. the person talking about casting a creature and you're the person <laughs> talking about casting cast? I don't know. I what was just trying to restore happened? a balance to the universe, I think. What happened to <laughs> us? Who are we anymore? Who are we? Well, anyways. Those are some of the so that's some of the, the coolest stuff. We've also seen it's not the only stuff that we've seen, but it's yeah. certainly some of the coolest. Can we I did not realize we'd seen Urza's ruinous blast. Urza is ruining things left and right, classic Urza. Classic Urza. Four and a white, legendary sorcery sorcery you can cast it only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker, exile all non land permanents that aren't legendary. Yikes. What? Wow. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say yikes. <laughs> That's what I was going to talk about. Gonna say? Urza's Rudas Blast. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Ooh, what about f the Flame of Keld? So this is another saga that costs one and a red. The first chapter of this novel is discarding your hand. Wow. <laughs> Ugh. Bold. <laughs> the Bold. second chapter is drawing two cards. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. We're going to get somewhere. The third chapter is if a red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player this turn, it deals that much damage plus two that permanent player instead spicy yeah hot flame of keld <laughs> picante spicy and hot. picante wow mucha lava correction scriptures what? yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the new taco bell uh taco oh are you being serious because it could lava. go either way <laughs> You don't know. This That's the beauty of this. This could 100% be a joke, or it could be the real next Taco Bell taco. <laughs> it's made out of Doritos Blaze chips, and the inside is nothing but sriracha sauce. Uh, you're lying. Okay, you made it up. <laughs> Figured it out. Do you know what? All the way through the uh, the shell being made of Doritos Blaze well, because is believable. <laughs> it is. It yeah. is. Taco Bell. <laughs> really doing it. Uh, I mean... Yeah. So all I can say about Dominaria is this set continues to look excellent. I'm very excited. It really does. And uh, every time that we see a new card, I'm just like super excited. And we have some preview cards to share. Not right Ooh. now. Don't get too excited. But very soon. Very soon. Yeah. They're going to be coming your cool. way. But uh, yeah, every day more preview cards hitting hitting the internet. And 
man, I just am like, when is this pre-release? Yeah. It's sneaking up Soon. on us. It's sneaking up. Oh, wow. it's in just a few weeks. Weird. <laughs> and that means that we'll have over on that YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, oh, we'll yeah. have um, the top 10 worst rares to open Yay. at your pre-release. Um, using, and we'll evaluate them using the Riparian Tiger test. Yes, we will. So you can see it in action. Uh, and then also a... Uh, <laughs> trumpets of the team modern super league <laughs> they i mean they really are honestly megan's team minnesota virginia or mnva That's uh, right. is competing tomorrow aka today if you're listening to this That's podcast right. on the day that it comes out and, and if you're not listening to this podcast on the day that it comes out it is also not tomorrow tomorrow is not wrong in any context what did i say today you said tomorrow the first time because you said what is technically correct from where you and I are sitting, which is today. Today. Wait, what? No, tomorrow would be technically from today. But you were but saying the first thing that you said was tomorrow, <laughs> which is correct from when we are recording this, but not from when anyone will be listening to it. Today. Calling it tomorrow is never correct, except for the fact that it is based on when we are but not when anyone else is if you're in the future you can still watch it regardless because it'll be on the Uh, internet in recorded form that's right and you are playing in the team modern super league yes the brew crew we are which is they have brewed they really have brought some spicy decks to the table if you're not familiar with team modern super league we got teams of all sorts competing on magic online against each other every week bringing uh some modern decks that the teams get to ban one of the decks and it's a king of the hill format where you just keep playing if you keep winning if not you slot you slot in another deck and you go up against somebody else Mm -hmm. your team won the first match uh against some european pros i believe and uh now you're gonna be playing some all over all over pros And now you're playing the Brew Crew, which is a bunch of people who are known for making crazy brews. And they certainly did not disappoint with the decks they brought. They really. This time. They really made some (laughs) scary decks. Yes. If I'm being honest. It's the word that I would use to describe them. Uh, So I'll talk first about um, our our decks that we're bringing. Yeah. yeah. What are you bringing? Um, So we are bringing uh, Storm. Classic. Which I (laughs) practiced. But we're thinking that they might ban it. We'll see. We'll see if that prediction turns out to be correct. Um, and then, uh, we are bringing Infect again. Um, we have, uh, Dredge, which I've had a really good time nice. playing. Um, Boggles. We're seeing if we're the first team to get Boggles through It's always ban. been banned. It has always been the other team's choice for banning. So we're going to see if we get to be the first team that gets to play Boggles. And our thought is yes, because they have some decks that hate on Boggles pretty well. Okay. Actually. Um, so what did I say? Storm. Infect. Dr- Infect. Dredge. Uh, Boggles. Boggles. Uh, Jund Elves. Ooh, Jund Elves. This plays our new friend Bloodbraid Elf. Bloodbraid, she's coming in. She's coming strong. She's yeah. going to cast basically whatever. Yeah, especially in Elves. It's just like, oh, what? Yeah, although sometimes she, it's like Bloodbraid into like a Llanowar Elves, and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, sure. that happened. Uh, anyways, so you've got uh, that, and then I'm missing one. Burn. Burn. Except it's like a weird Jund burn list. Another classic. Yeah. All right, it's too so weird to be. this what, is like not quite classic. What of these decks do you want to play? I obviously I love playing elves. Yeah. I do really enjoy playing boggles. I've grown to love dredge. Yes. Um, and I practiced storm yesterday. And you know what? Like I get that um, it's hard sometimes for modern to be accessible to people because there is like a financial barrier sometimes. Yeah. Um, but honestly, if you can get out there and just like practice with your friends where you like proxy decks. Sure. Um, or if you have friends and it's like you each end up building a different one and you, um, you like you each build different decks and then you can rotate them or, and practice each other's decks. Like I have loved getting to know about modern better. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is so fun. I've had a great time playing so many of these decks. It's just a great time. It's a fabulous format right now. Exactly. Everybody says it. Um, Yeah, you can play almost anything and, like, potentially do well with it, which is just great. Yeah, you can even bring your own brews, as the brew crew is proving here. 
That was such a tongue twister. <laughs> Bring your own brews as the brew crew proves. <laughs> the brew crew proves brews can crew. You can choose a brew from the brew crews. The brew crew crew brewed, <laughs> and you can brew too, says the brew crew who brewed. The brew crew brewed. Yeah. As in B R O O D. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're bevy of decks here. All right, so we've got Naya Breach. Which is just trying to, it has four Emrakuls. Oh, God. And it has, of all things, Generator Servant. You uh, sack it to add two mana to your mana pool. And that you can use to cast uh, a creature spell. It gains haste until end of turn. Um, for Lotus Cobra. Uh, sure. For Nest Invader. Ramp, 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 uh, ramp. Some Noble Hierarchs. Ramp, some, ramp. Uh, some Birds of Paradise. Um, and a primeval titan, and four primeval titan as well. So this is just, just a trying to ramp into ramp into some emeralds. Oh, yeah, and it also has four through the breach. So that's that. Well, I'm scared. Same. Uh, then they have Esper Solemnity, named for the card. Two and a white players can't get counters. <laughs> players can't get counters. Counters Nothing. can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. No uh, counters ever. No counters. And this combos with Phyrexian Unlife, which is they have four of that Ugh. and four of Solemnity. You don't lose the game for having zero or less life as long as you have zero or less life. All damage is dealt to you as though its source had infect. And so you can't so you get, get infected. Yeah, you can't get poison counters if you have Phyrexian Unlife and Solemnity out. Well, that's a thing. That also seems terrifying. Yep. Uh, it has. <laughs> Do three... you have a chem in removal? <laughs> yes. Okay. M- enough? Who knows? It also has three Zur the Enchanter, oh. which is one and Esper flying. Whenever Zur the Enchanter attacks, you may search your library for an enchantment card with converted mana cost three or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. And then plus, like, some removal and some disruption. So there you go. That's that well it's definitely interesting it I'll sure give it that. is interesting um then let's see uh there's they have a green white value town which is one of the most straightforward yeah um, it's green white creatures green white creatures there you go collect a company yeah makes sense the next deck name though is my favorite as that was green white value town and then there is heartless value town yes <laughs> Named for Heartless Summoning. This deck has four Heartless Summoning, which is one in a black. Creature spells you cast cost two less to cast. Creatures you control get minus one, minus one. Okay. And then it plays a bunch of creatures, like Obnixilus the Fallen. Who remembers this card? Not me. Not me. Three Oracle of Moldiah. Uh, Ramunak Exca- Excavator. The Gitrog Monster. Gitrog Frog Town. Vizier of the Menagerie. Oh, yes. Almost um, got cutest card, I remember. Tireless Tracker. Wow. It is interesting. Humans. Humans, p- very straightforward. We know that the, deck. the most straightforward. And then Mono Red Prison. Wow, you're going to Which a Mono Red Prison. I think prison. is what we are uh, probably going to ban. Yeah, Because it has scary. four cha- main deck, four Chalice of the Void, four Ensnaring Bridge, four Blood Moon. I'm going to... So you're just pretty good against us. <laughs> this deck is made to make sure you never do anything. Yes. That and it is. is a lightning banning lightning rod. <laughs> yes, it really is. It's just like, hey, it should be called ban this deck. <laughs> yes, the, <laughs> mono the red crews, ban this deck. The brew crew's mono red ban this. <laughs> Seriously, uh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who's kicking things off uh, for you and your team? I don't think we have the schedule quite yet. Okay. We don't know. All right. So uh, we'll have to we'll find see out what happens. Tune in if you want to see Ooh. that that madness. Sounds the great. madness of I this. I can't wait. Uh, I think it is going to be a ton of fun. Yeah. And so check it out. Twitch.tv slash magic. Yes. You can also watch replays of it if you yep. miss it. What time does it start at seven? It starts at seven central. Seven central. Okay. Five great. Pacific. Eight East Coast. Yes. All of that is true. And then six at the one that's between five and seven. <laughs> yes. Mountain? Mountain. And no, also known as the one that's between. The one that's in the middle. The one that, like, every time that you fly that way, you're like, are there really two time zones in this direction? And you're like, I oh, guess. Oh, yes, there are. There's, like, that weird one. Mountain. Anyways. You're so weird. Get out of here. Mountain. Mountain. <laughs> What's weirder, daylight saving time or mountain time zone? <laughs> good, good, good question. Yeah. Classic pole material. <laughs> It's time for 
for Flavor Text Theater, guess that card, German edition. That's right. We have here a pack of Odyssey. The only reason we knew it was Odyssey is because it's spelled phonetically. <laughs> Odyssey. O D Y S S E E. Big thanks to a friend of the show who sent us uh, these German packs and it was quite a quite an, a journey getting them finally to our office. But here they are. I'm really a, I'm gonna apologize to everyone who has <laughs> ever loved German. <laughs> For it's how not badly gonna be pretty. it's gonna sound. <laughs> we'll just Magic say that. die Zusammen Kunft. <laughs> Fifteen Spielkarten. 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 Spiel must be game. Did we um? Did we or playing, or oh. spell? Well, I don't know. Well, I'm glad that we didn't clear that up at all. <laughs> Spiel, you look it up. I'm gonna crack one of these. Did we already say what we're doing? What? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, that we're gonna guess what we're they gonna do. guess what these cards do. Playing card. Playing card. Yeah. All right. Spielkarten. Spielkarten. Ooh, I'm so excited. All okay. right. Ready? Yes. Should I mix them up? I don't know. No, I'm okay. Be fine. Am I going first? Yeah. Okay. You guess what it is, and I'm gonna try and find it. <gasps> Ooh, this one's Ooh, foil. It's a foil. Look at that creepy mm. looking thing. Traumvert. <laughs> Traumverzeher, Traumverzeherer. It is terrifying looking. Um, it, oh, it's a Lurkwaif. Oh. Fliegend, definitely flying. Fliegend. It is six blue blue. I found it. Fliegend, Stark und Widerstandskraft <laughs> des Traumverzehers <laughs> sind gleich der Anzahl an Spontanzauberkarten in allen Friedhofen. It costs eight. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's my guess. It Its power and toughness are equal to the number of instants and sorceries in your graveyard. Okay, let's find out. Are you right? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Oh my god, really? Instants just. Oh, the instants in all graveyards. Wow. So close. I'm pretty proud of how close I got. Yeah, excellent. Cog- cognivore. I love this card. Look at its face. It looks kind of like a scary version of the little. It's the little only buddy. other Lurgoif in the whole world besides Tarmogoyf. Oh. They don't even look the same. Cognivore's power and toughness are each equal to the number of instant cards in all graveyards. All right, here we go. Your turn. Okay. I've got Jungerbold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to start looking for it. It's a black card. It's a 2-2 two, two for two and a black. It has black, and then something happens. Wirf eine Kart aus deiner Hand ab. Der Jungerbold erhalt fluffkaf gluffkaf The best zoom ende de zoogs. It really sounds like you're making fun of German in a mean <laughs> way. Right, I'm trying it. to read it. Okay, black normally means regenerate. Um... But okay. I, I don't think that that's too much text for that. Ooh. I'm going to say you pay black and oh that's God. also but that's an additional cost. Yeah. Black, black and comma. you like have to and you discard something from your hand. Yeah. And then let's say then it's regenerated. I don't know. This is. OK. What does it do? Gains flying. That's my guess. Junger uh, bold. Oh, my God. Yeah. Disc black discard. So fledgling imp two and a black for a two two creature imp. Black, discard a card from your hand. Fledging, fledgling imp gains flying until end of turn. Oh, okay. All right. Not terrible. No, not at all. We've seen some real stinkers when we old open up these old packs. All right, here. Oh, this one what has like this? a weird little like um, symbol on it next to it. Moment des Friedens. Oh, it's Rebecca Gay. One in a green. Spontanzauber. <laughs> Is that uh, ins- uh, or is that sorcery instant or sorcery? I don't know. It's gonna be one or the other. Spontanzauber. Verhinder allen Kampfschaden der in diesem Zug Zugfügt. Zugfügt. Word. Rook blend two and a green. Du kannst dies Kart aus feinem Frieder für ihr. <laughs> Rook, okay. Rook blend Kosten spielen. End for see Don Gonzalez crap spiel. Okay, I'm you gonna also have to guess what its card is named. By the way, um, moment of freedom. Okay, um, I'm gonna say it's a sorcery, and uh, you um, you search for a forest, and put it into your hand, and you can kick it for two and a green, and you go and get two forests. Two? That makes sense. It's All at right. your very close moments piece. Oh. 
prevent all combat combat damage that would be dealt this turn. I was way off. And it's flashback. Oh, flashback, not kicker. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Ooh, I have a blue card here for a single blue mana. You get <laughs> Sorg Faltige Studen for an uh, Hexy Ray. <laughs> this has got to be like Opt or something, you know? Uh, uh, all right, all right. Oh my gosh, it's got a sorcery kind of guy looking on it. And mm, mm, uh, gosh, but there wasn't Scry back th then. Zyzur Karten und Wurf Don. Oh, I'm not even going to try and read it anymore. Um, you play this card <laughs> and you draw one. I have no idea. So you think you're just, it's just like blue it's draw It's just like a, a cantrip. In, All right. Hold on. Oh, I've, oh, it's careful study. Where is it? Go, scroll down a little bit. How did I, I saw it. it. I oh, cheated. there it is. Careful study. Oh, draw two cards and discard two cards from your hand. Oh, okay. All right. Careful study. Wow. Cool. Um, sorcery. So hex array. Hex array. All right, here we go. Okay. Um, Stam der Uner Mood Lichen. <laughs> Single white for a 1-1. One, one. Creature nomad. Hmm. Werf ein Kart aus deiner Hand ab der Stam der Uner Mood Lichen. <coughs> Erhalt. <laughs> mood Lichen? <laughs> <laughs> Erhalt plus O plus four. Biz sum ein de disugus. Uh, you discard a card Oops. and uh, it gets plus O plus four until end of turn. Just a little one one? Yeah. This, what do you think it's called? Um, Stam der Unermudlik. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm in the mood um, for plain, Plains Wanderers. Okay. What is it? It's right here. Tireless Tribe. Discard a card from your hand. Tireless Tribe gets plus O plus four until oh, yeah, end of Oh, you're turn. right. Okay. Okay. Ooh, another foil. Ooh. It's a black card and it is terrifying. It's one and a black <gasps> for a Sorry, one I one. I just saw the art of this and this is terrifying. Shrekchen clobber. Okay. There, Shrekchen clobber. Ooh. Oh my God. This has it's so many fun terrifying. words. Der Shrekchen clobber kann nur von Schwarzen oder von Ackerfuck Sturken Varken Gokkerk worden. <laughs> <laughs> it literally sounds like we're making fun. Look at that, though. How else are you supposed to say No, it? you're right. And then it has extra text with a keyword. I'm sorry, everyone who speaks German. I'm sorry. <laughs> Der Schwetzkrenz Klobler. Erhalt plus two plus two. Uh, und kann nicht block. And also, it's plus two plus two if it's not blocked is the kind of mechanic I'm seeing on here. Um... And it can't be, and it has like f fear or something like that. And the name is going to be, um, gobble, it's going to be Demon cr Cobbler. <laughs> demon Cobbler? Fright Crawler. <laughs> I mean, very close so to close. Demon Cobbler. Uh, creature Horror, it's a 1-1. One, one. Can't be blocked except by artifact oh, creatures yeah, and fear. or black creatures. It does have wow. fear. Nice. Threshold. Oh, Fright threshold. Crawler gets plus 2, plus 2, and can't block as long as 7 or more cards are in your graveyard. Okay, wow. so that's what Grenzwert means. <laughs> Grenzwert. Two foils. I love it. Grenzwert. Okay, here we go. Oh, gosh. This is all one word. Einfesslungskunstler. Einfesslungskunstler. Okay. One in a blue. Creature Zauber. I'm going to say that's a creature. Ooh. Um, a bear. Phantom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Phantom, probably. Dare. Ein Fesselungskunstler East Unblock Bar. <laughs> we got it. We got Unblockable. there. We got Unblockable. Unblockable. Blue. Wirf ein Kart aus deiner Hand ab. Discard a card. Blue. Discard a card from your hand. Wow, we're learning German. Bring dein Ein Fesselungskunstler auf die Hand signs Beister Zurich. Um, blue and discard a card. Return it from your graveyard to your hand. That's my guess. Okay. What do you think it's called? Um... What is that a long key, word? Key sneak. Key sneak. Key sneak. Escape artist. <laughs> which wow. Is another word for a key sneak. A key sneak. It's unblockable, like we said. You know that really famous key sneak. <laughs> and yeah, Houdini. That's what they used to call him, the key sneak. And everything you said was correct. Oh my goodness. Oh wait, no. Except blue, discard a card, return it to its hand, to your hand. So not from the graveyard. Oh yeah, just return it. 
Yeah. Okay, I have another blue card here with okay. another weird little tombstone looking thing before the word. I don't know what those mean. It's three and a blue for a dematerialization. Oh, I wonder what that means. Okay. Bring in a blind bend a cart diner wall off die hand ears bleedster zerdurk and rook blend is the keyword here. Five blue blue. Um, so this is a gonna bounce something. Okay. I think. Right, dematerialization is what I believe it's gonna say, and okay. then it, that's the flashback cost seven. Oh, all right. Let's see. Dematerialize three and oh, a blue. Okay. Return target permanence to its owner's hand. Sorcery. Wow, that effect has gotten a lot cheaper. Flashback for five blue blue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Freaking nailed it, German. Krosenish Raharen. <laughs> Tuna green creature druid. <laughs> three one. Verhersak. Trample shodden. <laughs> Trample shodden. Grenzwort, one in a green. Regenerate die Crosanitz Rosharen. I'm going to guess that it has uh, it has trample and one in a green to regenerate it. Yeah. And it's called um, Crosan Raider. Crosan R- Avenger. Oh, Avenger. Trample threshold. Oh, threshold. So if you have threshold, yep. you can pay one in a green to regenerate it. Great. Sweet. Dude, check out this card. Prise de rooms. Two red for a verzerambrung. Immer when ein spieler im zug eines. Oh my gosh. Uh, spielers ein land for mana tapped. <laughs> the store dieses land. Okay. This is the priest of runes or something like that. Um. It's going to be an enchantment, and whenever you tap a land for mana, uh, something happens. Mm. <laughs> wow. I don't know what. Price of glory. Oh. Two and a red, enchantment. Whenever a player taps a land for mana during another player's turn, destroy that That's land. That's what I was going to say, but I was like, there's no way it's that. Huh. Well. I was super wrong on the name. <laughs> <laughs> going back to my German class. Uh, all right. That's a shat and blood eye. That is a weird looking thing. Yeah. I'm going to call this um, eye of the volcano. Oh, all One right. One for an artifact. Two See. tap. Opfer das shat and blue eye. Erhor deinen manavorat um black red. Zein eine kart. I'm going to guess that uh, you pay one for it. Two and tap it and sacrifice it. You add black red to your mana pool and draw a card. Shadow blood egg. Yeah. But it does what it said. What yeah. I said. Sweet. Draw a card. Sick. Oops. All right. I have an anarchist. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm going to say that's what it's called. It's a two, two for five, four in a red. Um, when it is in combat, uh, uh, after, oh my gosh, four in a red. When anarchist in spile compt, const do ein hexacart diner. Oh, that means uh, uh, sorcery. Wall as Dynam Friedhof of Dine Hand bring in. So when it attacks, you can return a sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. I'm going to guess it's when it enters the battlefield. Oh, okay. We'll when it comes into play, you may return target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, okay. Anarchist. We are getting so good at German. Okay. Um, Grausiges Abelbin. That is a funny little bird. Spontenzauber. Spontenzauber. Zer store ein Nightschwartz. <laughs> My Nightschwartz. Diner wall. My Nightschwartz. <laughs> Wiederstand, scrap, kleiner, oder, a gleich, earn on their onzel on carton in dynam freed of ist. Uh, if target, cre- uh, you target a creature, if that creature would die this turn, draw a card. Okay, what is it called? Gra- um. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, tr- tree ropes. Tree ropes is ghastly demise. Oh wow! Single black instant destroy target non-black wow. creature if its toughness is less than or equal to the number of cards in your graveyard. Wow, crazy. Wow, way off, way off. Ooh, check this weird thing out. Sargatog. It's, it's an atog. Oh, one yeah. arachdos, one red black for a one two, for a little atog gobliny looking thing. That's a terrifying art. Oof. It's real scary. 
Oof. I think like it's like you discard a card, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, and there's another time it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Okay, here we go. What is it? Uh, it's just called Sarkatog. Sarkatog, yeah. Uh, one red, black, red, one, two. Remove two cards in your graveyard from the game. Sarkatog oh, okay. gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Sacrifice an artifact, it gets plus one. Ah, uh, yes. One Atogs like artifacts. That is true. Yeah. All right, here we go. We know this, don't we? I recognize that art because I always Schmuck. thought it looked very Asian. One in a white. Spawn Zab Zabber. Ein creature diner wall die du controllerist ertal bezum ein des zugis schutz vorn einer farb die un bes mitz sei eine kart. What is it? It's like some kind of protection. Yes. What is it? Shelter. Shelter. That's right. Target creature you control against protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Draw a card. Wow. Wow. So this is legitimately how people sometimes, you know, learn another language is playing. A game, I think. Uh, we have, you know, now become fluent in German. So, you yeah. know, you're all welcome to learn along with us uh, as we as and we. And thank do. you for the pack. Yeah, thank you for the pack. This is awesome. Hey, everybody. Time out to thank Ultra Pro for being a sponsor of Magic the Amateuring. Head to UltraPro.com or buy some sweet Ultra Pro products from Card Kingdom. Yes. They've got everything you could do ever want for magic truth i just turned around to try and grab one thing to show you all that is awesome that ultra pro makes and then i could not make up my mind there's too many cool things there are dex bo dex boxes they have dex boxes dex boxes i think that's how british people say yes <laughs> instead of if you, you don't have multiple deck boxes no, no, it's no, no, no. dex box dex box uh play mats <laughs> plays mat cards dice card sleeves dice. cards sleeve <laughs> dice so head on over to Ultra Pro, whether you say it the British way or not. <laughs> Remember when we did British slang on the show? We got to bring that back. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> Choke down a goose. Well, everybody, that's the show. But before we go, we have uh, two giveaways that we've got to right. do because we've got our March giveaway. So Ooh. this is our Gleam giveaway for the month of, month of March, and we've got a ton of awesome stuff, including cards we've opened on Flavor Text Theater mm -hmm. and some other awesome prizes from our sponsors. And that winner is Daniel Simpson. Ooh, congrats, Daniel. Daniel. And, of course, New Player Month is coming to an end with uh, the end of March, and so we've got – we couldn't just pick one winner for New oh, Player Month. They were, they were so cute. So many great pictures tweeted at us of people teaching uh their friends and their families to play and the two winners that we've chosen number one is mike whose twitter handle is at the bus and so congratulations <laughs> perfect twitter handle wonderful twitter handle yes. uh you're going home with some great new player stuff from card kingdom yes and christy at hey worst artist which i'm sure you're not the worst artist christy <laughs> yes <laughs> you are I'm also worse. winning yes uh, but thank you to Everybody who uh, played for New Player Month and who's been teaching people in their life to play, it was wonderful to see your pictures. Keep sending them in. We love seeing them. And just because New Player Month is over does not mean that Magic 101 is over. There will still be new episodes of that up every week. Yes. Uh, so check back there if you want to uh, a resource to point people to. Um, when you are teaching them to play. Once again, thank you to Card Kingdom, cardkingdom.com slash MTA cast. They sponsor the show. Show them some love by heading to that link and buying anything in your magical life that you need from Card Kingdom. And thank you to everybody who's become a new member or has been a supporting member for the whole lifetime or any amount of time on the show, patreon.com slash MTA cast. <laughs>